Hey, I'm Kenneth, and I'm working on a game called Suitor Season. It's a dating sim where you play as a princess and your goal is to avoid romance with a suite of horrible princes. This is an extension of a game jam game that I made a while back. If you want a more detailed look on how this project started, you can check out the initial devlog that I'll put in this information card up here. Now, in that initial devlog, I did briefly mention the conversation manager, but I didn't go into any kind of details on how it works. For this devlog, I want to go over the features that I've added to the conversation manager, but to do that, I need to start with an explanation of how it currently works. To start, what does my conversation manager do? The purpose of the conversation manager is to take in a conversation object and handle it appropriately. In my case, for suitor season, it means entering the dating sim part of the game and signaling the UI on what to display. Anything that the conversation needs to do is handled by the conversation manager. Now, what is a conversation object? That's just a directed graph of conversation notes. If you don't know what a directed graph is, it might sound a little scary and technical, but it's actually extremely straightforward. A graph is just a series of connected nodes, where a node is any piece of data. So node A is connected to node B, which is connected to node C. For an undirected graph, these connections must be bidirectional. They have to go both ways. A connected to B means that B is connected to A. You can go back and forth between them. Now, this isn't exactly what you want for a conversation, right? If Alice says hi, and then Bob says hello back, you don't want to go back to Alice saying hi again and then back to Bob just bouncing back and forth forever like a couple of awkward coworkers. You want to go to the next line. <laughs> So for a conversation, we just need to use a directed graph, which is the same as an undirected graph, except that the connections can go just one way. They don't have to be bidirectional. After Bob says hello back, you can go to Alice's next line. So if a conversation is just a directed graph of conversation nodes, then the next question to answer is, what is a conversation node? Well, each conversation node is just an object containing some data. In this case, the data is just whatever we need to represent this one line of dialogue in the conversation. Let's use another example with Alice and Bob. We want to start this conversation with Alice saying, hello, how are you? Well, that gives us two pieces of data right there, the speaker and the line of text. Now, we need another node for Bob's line. Before that though, let's add an ID to each of those nodes so that we have a way of telling them apart. A for Alice, B for Bob. Because Alice has more lines in this conversation, we want to use IDs A1, A2, A3, so on and so forth to ensure they're all unique. Now, let's fill in Bob's speaker and his line. So we have two notes, but we don't know how to go from Alice's line to Bob's line, so let's add that data in there too. We have the next node ID, which points to the next node. For Alice, the next node is Bob's ID, B, so we just reference that as the next node for Alice's. Then we create a conversation node for the final line, link it up as the next node in Bob's line, and we have a full directed graph of the conversation, as you should be able to see on screen. Now, Alice's second conversation node is the last one for this conversation. You can handle that many different ways, but I just point to a global end of conversation node, because it has a few benefits, but most Mostly just that it makes it really obvious when you're looking at the end of the conversation because it's in giant capital letters saying end of conversation. So that's the basic structure of a conversation, just a directed graph of conversation nodes. And the conversation manager is only responsible for understanding this graph, how to start traversing it, signaling the conversation UI, handling transitions between nodes, knowing how to exit the conversation when you reach the global end node. Anything related to parsing and understanding this digraph of conversation nodes is the only responsibility of the conversation manager. That's all it needs to do. But but the example we used is a linear conversation, and my game is a dating sim. Dating sims very famously have choices in them. If the game you're making doesn't have choices and the dialogue is all linear like the example, it's just a basic conversation system, you don't need a very complex system. What we've just described will work for you. But in my case, we need to figure out how to add choices to this. So let's expand our example. Alice now has a choice for how to respond to Bob. She can either say she's doing well, like she did in the previous example, or she can say that she's having a rough day. Now, like I said before, a conversation node is just an object containing the data we need. That's all it does. In this case, obviously, we need to have the two choices listed in the data. So we can just add a list of choice objects. And we can put similar data in these choice objects that we have in the other dialogue nodes. An ID, a line, the ID of the next node. Each choice is basically its own little conversation node. Now, for my game, the main character is the only one that can make decisions, so I don't need a speaker field in a choice object. But depending on how you want the conversation system in your game to work, if you have other party members or other characters make choices or say different things to guide the conversation, you can put whatever information you want into these notes. All they do is hold the data you need for your system. Now for the example on screen, I ended the conversation after a choice was made, but you can point to any node from the choice options to continue the graph for however the conversation goes based on the choice you made. You can lean into almost entirely separate graphs based on a decision made earlier in the conversation if you wanted to. In fact, let's throw up an updated example conversation to show how the graph might look if Bob decided to respond to Alice based on what she said rather than ending the conversation 
conversation after she makes her choice. But now we have to take the conversation manager into account because it's responsible for understanding the directed graph and the problem we just introduced is now the nodes aren't always the same. One of these basic dialogue nodes is way different than a choice node. Now we could make the conversation manager look at the fields to decide which kind of conversation node it's looking at and what to do based on the information present in any given node. But the way I did it and the way I think is best for conceptualizing this is just to give each node a node type. The simple nodes we started with are now specifically dialogue nodes, while the node we just came up with for giving the player a choice is a choice node. Then we can route the conversation nodes through the manager differently based on their node type. If you had a particularly complex system, you could build out entirely separate parsers as children of the conversation manager that their nodes get routed to. You could have a dialogue manager and a choice manager and whatever parsers you end up needing. But in my case, there's just the conversation manager that can understand every type of node. With this node type concept, we've unlocked a lot of power in the conversation system because you can make whatever node types you want. You can put any type of node in your conversation as long as you make sure the conversation manager can correctly parse it. For example, in my game, the princes have a certain interest level in the main character, like how much they're interested in a relationship with the princess. So I added an interest change node. It's used on the graph when the prince's opinion changes. Like if the princess picks an option that they don't like or says something rude, then they can lose interest in the princess by having the conversation run through an interest change node that lowers their interest level. And then I added to the conversation manager to understand it needs to signal the prince and change the interest level when it hits that node. This system is ridiculously extensible. You can add a node type for anything in your game. You can add an item gain node type that gives the player a specific item as a part of the conversation. You could have a set flag node type that sets a flag on the player to keep track of the things they've done, like you can only enter the cave once you talk to that guy, that sort of thing. You could have a heal your party node that completely restores your party to full health, like what happens when you have a conversation with Nurse Joy at the Pokemon Center. You could add conditional node types that branch out the conversation based on what's going on in your game, like, oh, this young lady will only say this specific thing if it's raining. And you can combine all this together to create incredibly complex conversation behavior without any bespoke programming. It all works by setting up your directed graph using the node types that you've supported. Okay, so that's the basic structure of my conversation manager. Now I can get into the new features I've added. I talked to a couple friends of mine that are dating sim enthusiasts who played my game to see what kind of features they missed having in a conversation system, and the three big ones that they wanted me to add were an auto mode, a skip mode, and a log. Now, before I get into the details, I want to say that the UI I made for these features is very placeholder because I'm planning on doing a complete overhaul of the UI that's currently there. I'm just not in love with the way it currently looks, and I think it could be a lot better. Plus, I have an industry friend who's like a UI UX genius, so I'm definitely going to pick his brain before I make any updates based on what I think looks good. But anyway, let's start with the auto mode because it was super simple to add. Essentially, they just wanted a button that lets them turn on auto mode where the dialogue continuously moves forward without needing them to press something every time a line finishes. Now, conveniently, when the conversation manager parses an interest change node type, it signals the change to the prince and then immediately goes to the next node. So I kind of already had auto mode in the system. It was just limited to this one specific node type. All I had to do was generalize it, plug the other node types into it, and add a button that allows you to toggle whether or not you're in auto mode. You can see on screen how once I've toggled the auto mode, it just progresses forward at the end of each line as you'd expect. It's a very simple feature. The next feature I added was the skip mode. This is a lot more complex than auto mode partially due to needing to define how exactly a skip mode will work. The way I chose to implement it is that if you have the skip mode enabled, then whenever you encounter a dialogue node, it will progress immediately to the next dialogue node. Once you encounter a dialogue node you haven't seen before, it will stop skipping forward and turn off skip mode. Let me know in the comments if that makes sense to you or that's not at all how you'd expect it to work. I've heard a lot of dissenting opinions on how skip should work in a dating sim, including like even small details about when it should turn off, if it should persist between conversations and characters, that sort of thing. I might need to make it like super customizable in the options so you get the exact skip behavior you want. And I might just need to add like a fast forward mode that does the other version of skip that I commonly hear people want. But I'd love to hear in the comments what you would expect from skip. Anyway, let me just talk about the feature. Now the game jam version didn't have any kind of save system, but since then I added a save system to the game. I haven't added the UI for like the save load menu yet, just the engine features. So it's not completely done, but look forward to seeing it in a future devlog. But the reason I bring it up is because I need a persistent system for keeping track of which dialogue nodes you visited before. And this needs to be a separate persistent system from whatever you're using to save the game. That's because in a dating sim, when the player starts a new run and starts a new save file, they expect to be able to skip past dialogue that they've read before in a previous playthrough. This means we need to keep track of which dialogue nodes the player has visited across all of their playthroughs completely independently from their save data. So I added a conversation persistence manager as a child of the conversation manager, whose only job is to keep track of the persistent state of these dialogue nodes. It keeps track of a resource called the conversation persistence file. It 
writes this resource to disk whenever the game saves, or auto saves at the end of a conversation, and loads it in whenever you start up your game. This resource is basically just a list of all the dialogue nodes you've seen before using the unique ID that is the combination of the prints, the conversation ID, and the conversation node ID. Whenever the conversation manager parses a dialogue node, it tells the conversation persistence manager that that node has been seen. Then, the conversation manager updates their list of IDs to include that one. Now, I'm kind of glossing over the implementation details here. It's not exactly just a list that I casually add to. I'm using dictionaries of the conversation ID to the persisted list to increase our lookup time so that we're using dictionaries rather than searching through an array of like thousands of IDs every time. And also, I broke the resource out into seven resources, one for each print, so that we can free up and load in these resources depending on the prints you're talking to, rather than just having a bunch of IDs sitting in memory that we're not even close to using. And all that might be unnecessary optimization that could even cause problems based on that file load and how Godot handles those nodes just sitting around, but I would need to look more into it and it's fine for now. So anyway, back to the feature. If you click the button that turns on skip mode, which is only enabled on nodes that you've previously seen, then it will override the automatic mode to tell it to automatically progress forward. And also when you turn on skip mode, it overrides the tech speed and increases it by a lot, like massively, so that it almost feels immediate. To do this, I did have to implement this variable tech speed, which I didn't have before, but I was gonna need to implement that anyway because I wanted to add it to the settings menu as a customization option. So when you click skip, it'll start scrolling the text very quickly and automatically progressing forward. But every time it parses a dialogue node, it asks the persistence manager if we've seen that node before. If we have, then it's fine and just keep skipping. But once we hit a node that we haven't seen before, we turn skip mode off, which also resets the auto mode override and your tech speed. That gives us a functioning skip mode. And with that feature done, that only leaves us to implement the log, like the history of your conversations. This is the feature where the placeholder UI is the most awful, so please ignore or how bad it looks. This feature was a lot easier to implement than skip mode because I implemented the easiest possible version of this feature. But it does have some deceptive complexity if you want it to work more wholly. Obviously, the initial implementation is just to have an array where every time you see a piece of dialogue, it just copies that dialogue into the array. And when you click the log button, you display the contents of that array. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, that's the current implementation in my game. <laughs> it does have a size constraint, so the history can only go back 100 lines, which is pretty acceptable in most cases. If I just wanted to leave it there, it probably wouldn't be a big deal. It would work work for the game. But if I wanted to add a complete history where you could theoretically scroll back up to the beginning of your first conversation, then I would need to use some kind of overflow buffer where I load in the previous hundred lines as they overflow from the initial history buffer and then write that overflow history buffer to a file whenever it fills up. And then as you scroll up through your log, we'd have to paginate out the results from the overflow buffer file writes. But I, I haven't given it too much thought, so that might not actually be the correct solution. But I'll think about it more in the future if I decide to make the complete history rather than the limited history. The other important note is something that astute devs may have already picked up on, which is that so far I've had the conversation nodes and the log file contain the lines of dialogue directly, like the actual text that the characters speak. That is a very bad practice for any game that you want to localize. What I should be doing is having a separate localization file for the English lines where the unique composite ID for the conversation nodes maps to the line of dialogue. Then when I want to display that line of dialogue, it looks it up through a localization manager using the composite ID. That's not how it's currently implemented because I made this during a game jam, so obviously I didn't localize it. I would really love to localize this game, but it's a super text and dialogue heavy game, so I would need to solve the problem of getting those translations done before I worry about the problem of implementing a localization manager. As Vimlark might say, that's future me's problem. But I think that about covers what I wanted to for this video. At some point, it kind of transformed from, you know, a more standard devlog into like a technical breakdown of digraphs and conversation systems. And I'll be honest, that made making this devlog a lot harder on me. So I'm probably going to try a different format for my next devlog video, more timeline and update based rather than a scripted summary at the end. But let me know in the comments if you liked this kind of technical breakdown, because if you do, let me know other topics you'd like covered. As a game industry professional, I have the experience working on this kind of complex stuff to make games, so I'd love to be a resource for any indie devs out there that need me. Also, let me know if you prefer to see some direct tutorials where I walk you through the implementation like line by line and discuss it instead of just going over the theory like I did in this video. And if you enjoyed the content, then please hit the video with a like and a subscribe and all that good stuff. I'm still a pretty small channel trying to like get my sea legs and get started, so every sub really means a lot to me. Plus, you can get in on this action before it was cool, like a straight up inbound shovel hipster. Anyway, I have no idea how to end a video, so for this one, I'll be doing a dramatic reading of a beautiful beautiful piece of poetry that was tweeted by one Sir Tyler Blevins. I'm in the middle of carrying a League of Legends game about to close it out, and my brawless wife brings me a sandwich not asked for. With chips, as I get a double kill bot lane, 
So, how is your day going? Okay, bye.